about two weeks after my first chemo, I was in the shower and washing my hair and realized that bits, big pieces of hair were falling out of my head and that I could, I needed to do something and it absolutely grossed me out. I mean, it was just the most shocking thing to see your hair falling out. And so I thought, you know, what am I going to do that we can make this a positive thing? So what we did is we brought the family together and we had a head shaving party. And I uh, had all my children and my husband shave my head bit by bit. It was a family event and I felt it was an important thing for them to experience because I didn't want anybody walking in and seeing me bald-headed and not have at least kind of the initiation of seeing this is what's happening and this is the best thing to do and for me it just felt natural to do this to, to have it cut each one of them be a participant they all wanted to help me and yet I didn't want one person just shaving it and not them all ha all of them having the opportunity to participate so each person took a, a go at shaving my head with great delight I'm sure so following the hair treatment, I um, had hair all over me, so I just excused myself to go and have a shower. So when I came back from the shower, there was my friend who had been taking all of the pictures, sitting in the chair, and there were my children shaving her head, and she was doing this in honor of me. And I had no clue that that had even crossed through her mind. And so there we were. Uh, sitting sitting there and someone just said you know we've got to get a picture of this look at the two of you I mean you're in this for a penny you're in this for a pound she was there every step of the way with me Jackie was referred to me because she had a lot of activation in her nervous system a lot of anxiety um, and a lot of that has just come about from the trauma of recovering from the breast cancer. And so what the shamanic practitioner or the shaman does is that we go into this altered state of consciousness and we travel with our helping spirits to find that soul part. We work with that soul part to help it to understand what has happened and then we bring it back through time and space and we blow it back into the person and we help them to integrate that soul part back into their essence, back into their life. Commonly what we see a lot in our culture is what we call soul loss and that happens when somebody undergoes some sort of a trauma um, or ongoing trauma where a part of their soul leaves their body or gets walled up in a part of their body. It might stay at the place of the trauma, it may go to another reality and then that leaves them vulnerable to then uh, attaining energies that don't belong with them. So as a shamanic practitioner, part of my job is to clear those energies away and to bring back that soul essence that that person is missing. From a shamanic viewpoint, we would say that as long as you have more passion for your life than what the illness has for your body, you're probably going to come out okay. When you read about shamanism, it's about nature, that everything, everything we have comes from the water, the air, the earth, everything that we have and so being being a part of that in my power animal which is a snake which is a very very powerful animal I can see that there are times when I will call on my power animal to get me through it. Power animals generally come to teach us about a specific quality um, and until we integrate that quality into ourselves and then quite often that power animal will move on and a new one will come in. So when I got there, you were there and your snake was so with you and you were smiling, you know, and the snake was around your neck but it was coming down your left arm and you were pointing with it. So its head was here, it was kind of leading the way. So we went straight in through this tunnel down into the lower world where Quite often we're working with the healing spirits and the power animals that help us with our instincts. And we just followed this snake and you were already down there, like by the time I was coming down the tunnel you were down there waiting and you said, I'm ready. It's a challenge to explain what happens. It's a feeling, it's a 
um, a strength or an empowerment that I may not have had if I hadn't called on my my animals or my my spirit or whatever I need at that time. I mean, God comes into it too, and I, you know, there there are times when I've asked I ask for help daily. I think I've been really coming along and feeling a lot stronger than I was two months ago. It's unbelievable the amount of um, the amount of improvement that I've experienced, right down to being able to open jars on lids that are quite tough, ones that I could never have opened uh, two months ago. And I'm not needing a nap in the afternoon anymore. Occasionally I do, it depends on the day. But as a rule, I'm not needing the afternoon naps that I was. Um, I'm still being very careful about what um, what I do and I'm very vigilant about not over extending myself because I certainly at this point don't want to go backwards. The many many learnings it's one of them along the way uh, which I'm quite thrilled about. Um, I'm realizing that sometimes doing less actually accomplishes more which is huge. Oh I've come so far I'm actually having a dinner to celebrate with family and friends, which for many years I've not done that. It's been a very quiet, family-oriented thing, and I just can't get enough of people around me and to thank these people because they're the ones that helped me through this journey. I am Mike Zawasi, Jackie's son, and I am a automotive refinisher by trade. Easy. <laughs> kind of cliche but they always say you know you get a whole new outlook on life but she's really you know got kind of that outlook now you know like that scared her into you know living each day for what it is and making the most of it you know not just you know sitting down and watching TV for a while and you know there's things that you can do so get out and do them kind of thing. Yeah. But today is a special Thanksgiving and I, I just wanted to celebrate it with a lot of people who were really there for me. Yes. When I, you know what, it's a very emotional day for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. Like I said, I met Jackie at the Vedic Yoga Ashram. And it's not like we knew for so long, you know, so many no. years. But when, it's like we knew each other for so, so long, long you know, that's yeah. what I mean, yeah. So Jackie started her uh, journey to wellness before, far before, like, you know, her three years before the diagnosis. So she was getting ready. So she, um, and then she also met different practitioners, like a Debbie, you know, she knew Debbie already, I know Debbie before Jackie's diagnosis. And um, it was, so Jackie was getting ready. So, and I think it was, she got the core group of practitioners and different kind of uh, healing modalities, like alternative, many. yes, many different things. 